Hi guys, this is Allison from Alleycat Creations. The law of one. Haven't touched that in a while. I got some really interesting um, polls from the book three that I want to go over a little bit tonight. But before I do, please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And it's very appreciated. And share if you can. And if you get anything out of my work, a light bulb, a new book, a mic drop moment, an epiphany, a connect the dot, please support my work. I would love to continue to do this. Um, I didn't do a video earlier today because I was digging in my attic, trying to start sifting through things that I could sell and things that I can chuck. And I came across uh, a lot of 9-11 newspapers from the Daily News days after 9-11. And of course I was in the city and watched it happen I was in my freshman year of college, outside the building, waiting to go in. And then a lot transpired after that. And um, I got, my mom saved the newspapers and the articles from then and hid them in a paper in like a plastic container and I, stumbled upon it and I went through it and yeah. So that was my day pretty much going through the attic and then finding all that stuff and then reminiscing on that day, which I hope will, the truth comes out. And I'll only leave it there. I chose some of these because I work with crystals. And this whole section, even the reading I did before, Ra and the questioner are talking about the pyramids and the structure and they're going over Giza and the queen's chamber and the king's chamber and the alignments. And like the gist of it all, is that those are energy centers for healing and for other modalities and I'll get into that. But we can harness the energy too, though, because we're in the middle of shifting. It's okay if you don't have those types of objects or things. Um, and again, when Ra and the other social memory complexes came down to help third density entities and beings teach the law of one and try to heal and try to teach all these things. Well, it didn't end up so well because everything got distorted and infringed upon and used more for negative than for positive. So, in this section, Carla hurt her wrist and they wanted to know what or how to heal her. Um, and then Ross suggests the use of crystals. Um, I want to explore more on the method Ross suggests. First, he suggests to balance the mind, body, spirit complex, also the polarized self. So you have to be balanced within your positive and negative energies. Balance. And I've been going over that 
through the Kabbalion. Ra talks about it in depth and has always been talking about balancing. But the, the seven principles really hones in on it and in more in depth. Then to balance, oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Then in visual, visualization, connect the inner light like a spiral upward towards the universe. So Ra is talking about a crystal on a string or a gem or whatever have you. This is a clear quartz. And they go into specifics, like exact measurements of like, if this is the hand that needs, like how far above it needs to go and how you're harnessing the energy. Um, and I don't know if they meant, they didn't say pendulum, but they did say a gem on a chain. So like a necklace, I have my Merkaba on my neck. I don't know, it's, it's not specific on what they were talking about, but just to show you an example of one of my pendulums. While holding the crystal, feel your balanced energy and universal light. Focusing on the green ray, your heart chakra center through the body and, chain, and charging and activating the frozen light in the crystal. So crystals, this is one of my pyramid um, wands. In here is frozen light and frozen energy. It's like water and ice. Water holds energy. Crystals hold energy. These hold energy. And when you get them, you can meditate and charge your crystal with the intentions that you wish to use it. So if you want this pendulum to do healing, I'd have to sit in meditation, align and balance my chakras, go into my green ray center and infuse my energy with this pendant for healing. Same with this. Because when you like, let's say you go to Reiki and they and they put the, you know, the gems on top of you or lay them in a certain way, or when you're meditating, you know, one one point is facing forward, one point is facing that way. It's to distribute the energy. Ross states the charge light of light love. Energy will radiate in a fashion with light vibration and healing energy that is intensified towards the magnetic field, very important, of our mind body spirit complex, the toroidal field that we have and in, that inhabits both of our poles. From the top of your head to your feet, you have a, a toroidal magnetic field that's always around you, beyond your auric field you are magnetic you are electricity and through that you can be healed at that point we open the vibratory shield of the violet red ray this way the crystal can adjust the field and aid in healing So we are protected, but we have to lower our, for those of you who are very advanced, the shield so that the, the gem can actually, or the crystal, whatever you're using, can actually penetrate what is wrong and help. You have to drop the shields so that it can do its work. 
The questioner asked about the size and bra uh, of like the gem and everything. And Ross states that the person needs to be in alignment with the crystal. So I say whatever resonates with you and the crystal, the one who has the pain chooses to work with. So being myself, I have a gem rack up here. Okay, and certain gems have certain things that it, it focuses on in the body centers. Um, like bloodstone helps with inflammation and pain. So wherever I'm in pain, I'll hold my bloodstone and sit with it for a little bit and ask for it to heal. And then I'll put it on the body part that it needs to be healed. Um, but if you're the one doing the healing, like you would go to a Reiki master or somebody who practices healing, they already have the gems. Most of the time they'll tell you, okay, from all this, choose one that you resonate with. You choose the whatever one that you choose and then they work with you. Um, and that's not everybody. That depends where you go. And who's working on you. Everybody, everybody has a different method of healing and using crystals. So I am not the end all be all and I'm not the expert on that. I just know from what I've studied um, and what I've kind of pulled together with that. Um, again, everybody uses their tools differently. It doesn't mean that they're wrong. It doesn't mean that I'm wrong. We have to use what is within our wheelhouse and what works. So what works for me might not work for the next person. You, it's all about trial and error with everything that you use. And of course, using it with the best intention of love and light. Roz speaks of a crystal on a chain, which I would say would sound like a pendulum. So if I were to be using this for healing and not asking questions to spirit, whatever is going on, I'd hold it up and let it, let it do its thing. But if I'm asking spirit a question, I have a mat in it, I can put it down and I can ask it. it it's not gonna be accurate. You know, show me yes. And it's going north, south. Show me no. East, west. So if I'm working with that, I ask it to show me what yes and no is and what, if it's spinning this way for me, it's usually yes. And if it's spinning this way, usually it's no. And then if it's like the X, maybe. But that's how I use my pendulum. Some people use it differently. I really don't use too much of my pendulums anymore. There, there is more evil that needs to be wiped out before I can use something very powerful without it being infiltrated and giving me wrong answers. But then again, it all depends. So yeah, I mean, there are a lot of different shaped crystals. Some of them are shaped in a pond. Some of them are double terminated. So that means there's two points on both sides. You know, there's the geodes where you, you know, the raw stone is there and it's not cut and polished. Um, you know, they have sacred geometry, they cut them into shapes. There's a bunch, there's spheres, 
you know, and every one of those gems have different purposes and in different workings that you can use. Um, I just figured I would like to show you just an example. I don't, I don't use this for healing. I use this to amplify my other gems. But yeah. Just putting that out there. So next, the questioner asks about space and time and what density do the concepts dissolve for us? The quest for unity is of an illusionary system. We seek the one to seek is to balance self-accepting and self-awareness. The distortions and its perfection Quote from Ra, resting in this balance awareness, the entity then opens the self to the universe, which it is. You are the universe because you are a part of the universe, you're in the universe, and you encompass the universe. So, I mean... We're in third density and it's very hard to kind of grasp what this actually means. But you have to think about when we move up, when will be when will we comprehend the entirety? And it what it's not going to be everything. It comes in in again levels. So when will this third dimensional delusional nightmare dissolve away from us so that we can actually learn the truth? so that we can encompass fourth density practices of love and compassion. We're in just self-discovering right now and self-awareness. And we're on the end stage of third density. So we, most of us are already on our fourth density missions of understanding, comprehending, and encompassing wisdom and love and compassion. And again, the, uh, the illusionary system, it's an illusion. It's the matrix, it's a simulation. That's what I take, it's my perception of what I take from when Ra talks. It's just an illusion. Though I wish our illusion would just stop it already and knock the nonsense out so that, I mean, yes, I would like to move eventually, but it's gonna take me a long time. Just, just let me have my bills paid, guys. Those of you on the interwebbings, and there's people suffering, all the wake people up, cut the nonsense out because you're going to be judged just as much as everybody else for inaction. So by intense seeking the light energy may, we may attract then the inner seeking meets the cosmic prana, then the realization of one takes place. The one being the one infinite creator, the one, the all, I just went over that, the all, the all encompassing all that we get infused with this. And hello, we get, we, oh shit. We're all one and the same. And fourth and fifth, six densities work in a system of polarized space time. When working with crystals, the key is to pick up on the magnetic field of the person. So going back, because I didn't, um, section it off so when you move to fourth it's going to be fourth positive 
And then for those who are polarizing negative, it's going to be a fourth negative. The same thing with fifth. It's going to be a fifth positive and a fifth negative. Six positive, six negative. It's going to be different paradigms. They do merge. And we see it now. Baddies. Crusaders, whatever you want to call them. Interfering. It doesn't mean they don't exist and they don't exist within the same realm. They're just not having the same experience as us and they go to a different plane of existence to work out whatever they need to work out. We work out whatever we need to work out, but it's on a positive timeline and a positive polarity. They go to the negative polarity on their negative timeline and they work their stuff out, but it, they do commingle. There is interaction. We'll see what happens when we all traverse to fourth. So again, the key, the key understanding of the crystals um, is that as we have our field of magnetic energy, we have our positive and negative pole or the negative, positive, negative pole, whatever it is, we still have poles. And so does a crystal. It has its magnetizing pole as well. And it's about picking up on this energy of the magnetic energy that's frozen in there, but it still has energy. It's just frozen in time, but it still exists in it. I know it's a, it's it for a lot of people looking at a gem, they're like, what? But I'll just give the analogy when I was working with children, my prior job experience. And again, I, I used to wear a lot of gems to work to counteract and balance my energy because people would drive me batshit crazy, not the kids, the adults. And there would be a lot of energies because Manhattan is the 10th layer of hell, in my opinion. So got to keep myself balanced with all that insanity. And the kids used to come and want to play with my gems, but only a few would touch them and like, whoa, that feels cold or that feels hot or wow, that's vibrating. Little children can pick up on that stuff. So just know that. Yep. So the next topic that kind of ties into crystals, but doesn't, but it does is um, the pyramids. And there are a few people who actually have pyramids that they sit in. Um, they're either plastic, wood, copper. They can get really pricey, very, very pricely. Um, but people do sit in them and it does harness your energy. Um, I have a copper tiny it's not tiny but it's not one that i could sit in it's that my gems sit on like sit under um so the pyramid pyramid acts like a funnel that increases the density of energy so when you're sitting this is why, again, the ancients used pyramidal technology for energy harnessing. So when you sit in a specific where the apex is on the top of the pyramid and you're doing meditation and you're envisioning, you know, how we envision the light coming down from the universe into your third eye, into your crown, well, into your crown, then your third eye and into the rest and goes to the bottom of your feet out to the middle of the earth and to through Agartha, whatever it is, 
and then it comes back up in ciphers and it and it's in it's a flow. Um, so the questioner is asking about a diamond or shape. Okay, the diamond shape. Um, a pure crystalline that is frozen light, which would be in our third density, the physical third density. Um, would that have anything to do with intensifying the energy so that a person can use it either for healing or other things? And Ra quotes, I'm quoting Ra now. The crystallized entity may cause interdimensional light to flow through this material, the diamond-shaped gem. The more regular, regularized the entity, the more regular, regularized the crystal, the more profound the effect. So not only do you need to be balanced, the crystal also has to have the same intensity or equal to you. And when you're underneath the pyramid using all these things, it amplifies it. We're going to get to the pyramid. We're going to get back to the pyramid in a minute, but uh, again, the, the law of one kind of goes all over the place in some sections with questions. And one that's in the middle of this is something I am super curious about because I've tried doing this and I, I obviously it's not my superpower yet. And a lot of you, but we've seen videos where people can bend metal objects like spoons. How the do they do that? And then there are people who use psionics where they use and visualize and, and somehow tap into an energy where they could start making leaves, vortex spiral up off the ground with no wind, no nothing. They just get it to come up and, and dance. Um, Matilda, if you've ever watched that movie, she gets so angry, shit starts shaking, she can make things move with her mind. That. Because if I could just sit here and mentally think about putting everything in its boxes and packing my stuff up so that when I do have to find an agent and put my house up, like all that work is already done. I wouldn't have to move. I'd be tired, but I wouldn't kill my back. So I thought this was very interesting. Um, so the questioner is asking about telekinesis, the bending of metal and wants to know the process. So, in a pyramid, there's three spirals. And I'll get into that in the next section. They're talking about the second spiral. So you have the first spiral, and then you have a second, and then there's a third within the light stream. Um, I was going to draw a visual, but I don't know where my ruler is to make a pyramid and then I don't know where all that is. So I do apologize. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking uh, unartistically professional. So the second spiral of light ends at the apex. There the light acts like a laser beam in a metaphysical aspect. When this is directed at a metal object and bending may occur. So somebody is able to manipulate the light energy out of the ether and harnessing that energy, looking at an object and making it bend. 
the person is directed to an upward spiraling light. With the use of a third eye and crown chakra, the energy with intelligent infinity and energy. This will be helpful in higher densities being used for positive ends. So in, when Ra talked about how he made the pyramids, I mean, and there's a lot of debate about who really built the pyramids. Was it done with sound and vibration? Was it done by Ra and his social memory complex that stayed in Egypt? We really don't know. And it's speculative. Again, I can't get that word out of my mouth properly, but you know what I'm talking about. Whatever the case, whoever did build them still needed to use that power of their mind to literally physically vibrate at a certain frequency and use their third eye and mind to gravitate and all do it as a, as in a, as a collective to get, get a block and place it down. Whoever it was, someone had to do it, and it wasn't humans. I've never been to Egypt, but I've studied the architecture. No way. Zero way a human could, could do that, or multiple thousands of humans. No way. No. It's just not logical. So, again, we can't tell you for sure who really built it. And this is Ra's take. If Ra's right or wrong, I don't know. But he's talking about using and tapping into that energy. And the fact that that energy has been used for it negative is probably why a lot of us don't have that ability just yet. Because, of course, we would want to use it for the love and light and to help humanity. While there are entities who can tap into the negative polarity and use it for nefarious things that would do harm to us. So better yet that we wait until we polarize positively so that we can use it for the greater good of humanity and not to destroy it. And now I'm gonna talk about the three spirals of light. Ross states the first light study is about studying and healing. So when the initiate goes into the, to the pyramid and sits in the chamber, they're working with the first spiral of light. And that is through that light is healing and is studying that stuff. The second spiral to the apex, just going up, is used for building. Lifting and building, what he was using. The third spiral spreading from the apex is used for energizing. So the third spiral has positive effects on the direct piranha. Placing over the pyramid shape gives energizing shocks to the electromagnetic fields. This is done on third density and it can be very stimulating, but if you do it too much and for too long, you can damage yourself because you're not of a higher density and that energy can do harm. And the shocks, is because our time space continuum has a lot of intercepting issues to say the least. It's hard to tell. So here's a pyramid. I made this, by the way, it's very, very expensive for me to make this, and I wasn't realizing it. Um, 
but you have your clear, clear crystal here and then you have the copper coil wrapped around the gem. And then I have um, a sacred geometry plate and then I have the copper. And then underneath I have clear quartz and amethyst. And then I have obsidian and turquoise and halolite. And then on the bottom I have clear quartz. It's kind of hard to see because there's a lot of glitter in there. So the first spiral would be inside of it, but widely wrapping around. The second would be wrapping around and coming up, and the third would actually be projecting out. And it's the best way I can describe it. Some of us need visuals. Some of us need visuals. So there are there are a lot of people who have those um, pyramidal shapes that they sit in. Um, I know Galactic Greg, if you guys watch him, he sits in one. Um, there's a few other people that are out there that you can find that sit in a pyramid. It helps heal them. And when they meditate, I'm sure there's a lot going on. But Ra does kind of state that the pyramids, when they were built with their initial good intention to help humankind, um, they were naive in thinking that that modality was going to help them and people. And it did, but it got infiltrated. And then it got used for negative purposes. He was saying, likewise, the concepts you can use, but it's not the end all be all because we are going to be moving beyond that kind of modality and later in other densities, we would be able to use that more successfully and with a good intention. Where here, we don't really necessarily need them because we can harness that energy just visualizing. So don't get upset that you don't have this huge pyramid to sit in. I mean, as cool as it is, and I'm sure it does work, I'm not saying it doesn't, um, but it's not a necessarily a necessary thing for third density. And yes, we are moving to fourth, but we don't know what that's gonna look like. There's a lot of people talking about what their vision and what their perception of fourth density is. We don't know. That might be what they are projecting themselves into because that's what they're manifesting for themselves. Who knows what we are all trying to manifest good things, prosperity for all, a cleaner, a cleaner earth, a healthier Terra. But again, you know, Dolores Cannon says we're like, there's a new earth and it's ab absolutely shifting. Maybe other people are like, no, we're like being physically lifted, the spaceship of earth and the encompassing other lands beyond the, uh, beyond the ice wall. We're shifting through the aqueous matrix and we're going to be actually where we were by our crystalline central sun. Which then things might look completely and utterly different to us. If we go with the Elon Musk is terraforming Mars, well, the lands beyond the wall, there's a Mars. And look guys, I'm not necessarily a flat earth person. I am not a spherical person. I am not, I'm more of a toy royal. There's, there's depth and densities and planes of existence 
that we can't physically see with our own two eyes. And spirits like it's neither. Their density with a two dimensional perception is flat. Does that mean that it's flat underneath us? No, that just means the land that we inhibit right now, Terra on top is flat. Whereas higher densities, and then again, if we really do have a firmament, it's a spherical firmament and that's what we're probably seeing. But I, there's a lot of lies, like NASA in, in Hebrew is deceiver. So we've been lied to about everything. So I don't go based on who says what, because there's infighting. And I really wish that people would stop making fun of either or, because it's neither. It's all based on your perception. Like I'm struggling right now, but a lot of people are not perceiving that because I'm here and I'm, I'm putting out good vibes. Um, some people are colorblind. So what I see is red and they, they see green. It's all about perception. It's metaphysical. But a lot of people have gotten it's neither. It's a little bit of both. And when everybody comes to grasp and stop making fun of other people and stop bashing people for having a perception and that's what they're thinking and that's what they're perceiving they're not wrong and they're not right it is what it is so we got to get off of that petty nonsense because you're never going to know for sure until it actually happens and we find the truth out and that's just one-sided lopsided truth that's given to you what is resonating in your heart if it resonates in your heart that you're living on a sphere, beautiful. And if you're resonating that you're living on a flat earth, beautiful. The truth will come to us eventually. Don't sweat the small stuff because I mean, it's major, but it's small. Because in the larger scale of things, everything I've been trying to talk about is elevating yourself and coming together with people. And that is gonna be people that have differing opinions than you do, right? I don't think everybody that watches me agrees with 100% of what I say. And also I don't agree with half of the things that I read. I read them because it opens up your mind to critically think. I have my own opinion. Sometimes I inject them in and sometimes I don't. But regardless, I respect everybody's perception of what they see through their two physical eyes. I'm not talking about their third eye. I'm talking about the physical eyes. We all have different perceptions of things. And that's beautiful and it's okay. But at some point, we all have to come together, just like Ra and his, you know, his, his group, and start coming together to build a better world. However, that's going to look as long as we're all prospering together and everything's harmonious and everything is in rhythm with itself. That's it. I don't necessarily would want to live on a world that everybody's consumed by greed, money, crypto. I think it's very, very, very greedy. Everybody's like, didn't you invest in this and that? Didn't you buy some gold and silver? Didn't you do this and that? Hey, I can't, not, I really can't afford to because I really have nothing in my bank accounts to invest. And I'm not going to sit there like some of these stars and launder money and, and falsify documents. It's not me. I would like to earn my, my keep. But I think it's all greedy. And yes, money is necessary. No one's saying no. And I just came to the realization when I was, you know, put on a set to a different path. That that's not something I need to focus on as long as my needs are met. 
that's all that matters. I can't wait. I don't like to kill things, but when I'm doing yard work or I have to like open my front door, I get a swarm of shit. They must love me. It's annoying. So I, I just wanted to put that out there. Um, it's very much, you know, what the law of one kind of is saying to an extent. It's like either path you have is going to get you back to God, creator, infinite intelligence. It's your choice to make that decision in their density. And that's now. You know, some people live really happy with really very few things. I'm like one of those people, I have just enough to make me happy. I don't really need too many people in my life. I'm right, I mean, right now I have like three real friends that I can actually physically see. And then some of them are moving that I can still communicate with. I, I don't have close friends, a group of them. I have like three or four and that's it. And it's a beautiful relationship, but they have their lives. They have what's going on with them. And I'm here all by myself. I'm happy and I'm content with that because that is what it is. I have to live in the present moment. And I hope that a lot of you are starting to realize that the biggest mistake these negative polarizing entities did was make us sit home and do our work on ourselves. They didn't anticipate all of us connecting they thought we were going to go and figure out how to get into communities how to reach out to each other and how to connect to newer people that are vibrating on your level they weren't th they were not thinking that and look what happened you have to be happy and content with your situation forgive and let go that is very hard. I have to forgive and let go of everybody who made it so that I couldn't work. And I, the job that I loved very dearly got taken away from me. You know how hard that is? It's damn near hard. But I, I'm slowly letting it go and trying to look forward, not backward into a new future and figure it out. And it's not easy at my age to have to pick everything back up and do it again. This will be my third go around at another career at another job if i can't get something in my field in another state so when we're working and visualizing in meditation with this spiral energy um i don't know honestly who has any raw exact visualization techniques of the, the spirals. But I know when I have an energy here that needs to be crossed over, I make it look like in my mind, I visualize a tornado and I visualize the light taking them up. That makes sense. 
so I visualize a tornado. It's a still, it's a spiraling energy with many vortices of light. So I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's something you can try and see if that resonates with you. And last topic, the Ark of the Covenant. Those of you who are religious, who do watch me, I am just reading what Ra wrote in my own words, because it is my insights. And I just ask you to have an open mind to not, you might not like what you have to hear, what you're gonna hear. Okay, I'm gonna just lessen the blow now. The 10 commandments were not two tablets. It was one scroll. With many other religious artifacts that went in the ark. And the ark was designed by the negative polarity. Who created sons, who were the, who, the negative polarity who created it was the sons of Levi. The ark was given an electromagnetic field that gave it power negative but here's the good news those in service to the one creator can still harness the positive from it again so the intention that you draw the energy from so even though the arc itself might be negatively polarized you are still negatively polarized in your body you just are more of a balanced human being but you could still harness the positive with what's inside of it, the contents in it. So know that the, the Ten Commandments, and again, he goes over what the Ten Commandments is. He's just, Moses had good intents. He was of the positive polarity. It got infringed, the message. But what's on the scroll, whatever the, re the original contents of that scroll is, whether it be the Ten Commandments or other things, it's positive. So don't, don't think it's horrendous, it's not. But I do an episode that does go over the Ten Commandments. When you all realize that we are living in the 10th layer of hell, that this is hell and it's Satan's world. Satan, by the way, Marduk, whoever you wanna call him, he got recycled back to God and got dissolved into love and light. So all the baddies out there, your deity is no longer with us, sorry. Damn. Again, we've been lied to just about everything is a lie or inversed. We won't know the entirety of what falsehoods and what half truths exist. A lot of us are doing a lot of that work right now, trying to uncover, unlock, go into different types of books and pluck out what is considered something that could be maybe molded into truth. And when the truth does come, is it really the truth or is it another scam shit? 
show. We won't know until it actually happens and transpires in front of us because in third density, you need tangible results. You, you know, people like, oh, I believe in God, but like Odin never existed. Well, how do you know the energy of Odin never existed or Hercules or Zeus or this one or that one? Because your God is above everybody else, but it's unknowable or unseeable be, and it's on not tangible object. But the other, other energy, no, doesn't, no, they don't exist. No, they're evil. Again, we are on a plane that has duality. So even the negative has a positive polarity. They're just choosing the negative. The same with us. We're choosing the positive, but don't think that we don't have the negative side to us, and we do. They have the positive side to themselves, too. And if you look at Lucifer, you could take Lucifer as a positive feminine aspect that dwells within all of us. And Satan and Lucifer were two separate beings, by the way. Different. And really what they, they consider Luciferian, to, you know, the, the, the truthers that talk about that stuff. They're really talking about seeing that Lucifer. Again, it's wordplay, spell casting. So I, I really found these sections very interesting. I found, um, you know, the way they were talking about the crystals, very interesting. Although he did not say pendulum, I don't know in what capacity, I mean, if it was a necklace or what they were using to heal Carla. Um, but this is on a chain and could do the same thing. So I just felt this might help visually show you. Um, there are people who do heal with crystals. Um, I'm not an expert on it, although I would like to study it one day in my in my you know time space whenever I'm allowed to do so. Um, I definitely would love to do that. I work with crystals when I'm meditating, and I just have them all over the house to help with the energy. Um, I was gonna do some videos on gems and I still might. It's just a large undertaking at the moment if I have to pack up and move. And I kind of had that insight a while ago. So I don't want to like throw myself, like a book is a different thing because I can always go back to it, but gems are different. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I don't want to be too long. Um, this book is incredibly eye-opening. I get why telekinesis isn't as a pot, you know, it, it, you don't, you heard it more in the 80s and the 90s, especially with the movies, but we really haven't seen too much or people are just not talking about it in public that they have the ability to bend metal or move an object with their mind. Like, it's mind blowing, the powers that people have or can harness. And I wouldn't wanna blame those people because they don't wanna be taken for negative nefarious things. So, but if you have the ability and not afraid to use it, please, leave a comment or email me because I'm amazed and I want to know. <laughs> I'm sure everybody else knows, but I won't divulge. So until the next time, guys, I hope everybody had um, a really good weekend. I hope you got something out of this episode and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to hit that like button that helps me and it's free. Bye, guys.